Hello, greetings and welcome. This is Tea with the Druid, number 300. Uh, I'm Philip Cargom and Tea with the Druid is brought to you by the Order of Bards, Servates and Druids. And it's lovely to see everybody arriving in the circle from Delaware and East Yorkshire and Texas and Aberystwyth and Durrington and Scotland and Portugal and East Yorkshire and London and Belgium lots of different places around the world the uh, stronce and the orkney islands and uh, costa rica great yeah costa rica wonderful place baltimore um york philadelphia um uh, uh saltburn in teesside ontario arizona southern germany um and bourneville is that where the cocoa comes from that's what i want to know um so lovely to see you and um uh richard what a nice comment let's put this i like that uh so good evening philip congratulations on hitting this milestone tea with the druid was one of the things that introduced me to druidry and persuaded me to join her but it's also helped me through the pandemic so i'd like to thank all of you ah oh, thank you richard and we met rather wonderfully we i met richard i'd noticed his comments coming up for probably over years i guess uh and then we met on glastonbury tour at the end of a ceremony one um solstice uh Richard introduced himself to me, so that was great. So it's lovely to have you here, and let's just allow ourselves the luxury of settling in. I think often we think we haven't got time to devote to settling down, calming down, just kind of coming to rest within ourselves, because there are so many demands uh, that we make on ourselves, that other people make on us, and that life seems to make on us. And it takes a little bit of effort to just allow ourselves to settle. And I need reminding, I need reminding. One of the reasons I love doing Tea with a Druid is because it really helps me. It really helps me to calm down and to settle and to center. And the fact that we're doing this together feels really important too. It's certainly helpful as a motivation. When I know that a couple of hundred people now are sitting here with me, as it were, wherever they are at home, it helps me to, to be my best self, but also to perhaps, perhaps that's the wrong thing to say, because being one's best self implies that one's making an effort. And the trick, in a way, I think, is not making an effort. We make an effort to get through each day and to do the various things we have to do. And then this is the kind of time where we can not make an effort. So the great news about Tea with a Druid is you don't have to try. You don't have to do anything. It's just to sit and be. And not just sit and be by yourself, but sit and be with hundreds of people around the world. That's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? So it creates a kind of discipline. And in a way, um, perhaps that's why, you know, the whole kind of church on Sunday thing once a week, perhaps there's a real innate wisdom in having a meeting once a week. A week, in, in one sense, is quite a short period of time. In another sense, um, a week can seem very long and lots can happen in a week. It's a good, 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 you know, magical, the number seven, it's magical after all. Every seven days we come together and just settle and open up in some ways. And here's another great mystery, I think, is that when we open up to ourselves, we're also opening up to the whole world. And I think this is perhaps one of the interesting kind of subtleties or nuances or, or distinctions around, say, druidry or nature-based spirituality as against some conceptions of spirituality which focus on getting away from the world. So it's not like we're all here together getting away from the world. At least that's not where I'm coming from. It's not like we're meeting together because life is so stressful and we want to get away from it. No, strangely enough, 
the question is more like, or the intent is more like, how can I engage more with my deep self and the world? So this isn't escapism. This is whatever the opposite of escapism is. Competition. If you can think of the, the opposite term to escapism, uh, do type it in. I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, and meanwhile, oh gosh, what's what's that? Um, I see there's some spam coming in. How very strange. Um, okay, just ignore odd messages if you happen to see them. Um, if I could be bothered, I'd try and delete them, but I don't know how to. So, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, Alice says, yes, it's a wonderful magic to sit with lovely people from all around the world. Same, when I joined, I immediately felt calmed and se centered. And that, that feeling, check this out, see if you agree with me, that feeling of feeling calmed and centered isn't checking out. It's not like you're, we're checking out from the world. Oh, there's this bunch of people who do this weird thing and they check out and they don't engage with the world. No, it feels like the opposite. Actually. No, no, we're, we're checking in, checking in with our bodies. Let's do that. this now. Checking in with our bodies. How does your body feel? <sighs> and you don't have to get a word for this. Maybe you know you just notice how your body's feeling. You might want to type it in, you might not, it's okay. And then shift to, to your feelings. How are you feeling? your emotional feeling self. What's the sort of feeling tone you have at the moment? And again, if you feel like sharing it, do share it. Don't worry if you want to stay with this and feel more private. And then you move to your thoughts. What's going on in your mind? And then let's come out from that. And let's feel this in this circle. And let's see engagement, deep commitment, inclusivism, presence. Yes, that's it. Yes, presence. Thank you. Um, of like collect minds, rejoining of reconnection, clarity. I'm seeking integration rather than fragmentation. Yes, I'm not cutting off from stuff. I'm trying to bring stuff together. Calm is a great mindset, says Susie, who I think is on another island. I'm on, in Mallorca at the moment. I think she's over on Ibiza. Um, Monty Python spam is occupying my brain. Um, escapism versus staying put, a kind of grounding. Checking in, yes. I've taken a different approach to existing in this world. It's serenity, chilled. Yes. Lovely. Okay. Okay. Lots of lots of interesting. Oh, oh I see. Now, now we're talking about something else. We're talking about how you're feeling. Because I was thinking conflicted and I was thinking that's not the opposite of no, but if you're how you're feeling, needing connections, tingly, lovely to center, a little on edge, feeling productive, happy and blessed, a bit achy and tired pleasant, calm and relaxed and blessed, also conflicted, wired, calm and well, calm, sinus pain, a bit of stress, too many things on my to-do list again, calm excitement, nostalgic, the body feels creaky, I know that feeling, content and grateful to be in the circle, anxious, all over, the place, I guess, and then still. Aching but satisfied after a week preparing a peace garden. That sounds lovely. Right. A bit exhausted after days of organizing my father's funeral in another country. Gosh, tough. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Lots of interesting comments here. I feel scattered and a failure. Full of sugar, but also sunshine. 
a bit excited and optimistic. Body feels like it's sinking in. Womb cloud, reconnecting, ecstatic, feeling one with the world. Susie is saying, yes, I am in Ibiza, yes. Sleepy, rested after a day off, yeah. So, so you see, what's, what's interesting is that we, I don't know if you have this experience, but it, the, simply by, first of all, checking in, because we often just sort of hurtle through life and then hit the bed at the end of the day. But if you're checking in, just a couple of, and it takes seconds, doesn't it? Just just check in. And then what are you checking? What do, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, I'm, I'm checking to how, how, how my body my body feels. Okay, I'm feeling tired, not tired, relaxed, not relaxed, wired, whatever it is. So that's, and you may be articulated. If you're in a group, you say it in the group. If you're with a friend, you say it. If you're online, you type it in here. And sometimes, quite often perhaps, just articulating it helps to shift it a little bit. You just feel a little less tired, a little less anxious, a little less wired. Not always, but sometimes. But then you can check in in your feelings as well, because you're not just your somatic body sensations, you're your feelings as well. So you do that and you say, oh, am I feeling, oh, I'm feeling quite buoyant today, or I'm feeling really loving or peaceful or calm or whatever it is. Okay, and you say it. Hopefully, now there's an interesting question. Does that go away too? If you're feeling calm and you type it in, do you stop feeling so calm? I think somehow it's skewed. And if, you've, if, if, you're, if you're having good feelings, expressing them reinforces them. Maybe I'm just making this up. I don't know. Tell me what you think. If you have good feelings and you express them, that reinforces them. If you have bad feelings and you express them, sometimes it can help to shift to get them out of the way. I'm feeling anxious. Maybe that helps to just, just clear yourself a little bit. Just check that out. That's rather an interesting question, isn't it? That maybe you'd like to ask yourself that. When you feel something and you express it, if it's positive, does it stay with you and maybe even get a bit stronger, reinforce you? Yeah, I'm feeling calm. And then it makes you feel even more calm just saying it. Or, and when you feel negative feelings, difficult feelings, does expressing them help to shift them? Let's see what you think. Um, right, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Debbie has pointed out, that's one of Asagioli's psychological laws. I don't, I don't, I'm working on a book on psychosynthesis on, developed on, out of Asagioli, Roberto Asagioli's ideas. Maybe um, Debbie um, has conned on to that. Uh, that's what's been on my mind. Working with his stuff has certainly been on my mind, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes. Alice says, yes, it does seem that expressing a feeling tends to positively enhance. Um, Eunice is saying, relieved to be here, like a weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Acknowledging feeling, naming them helps, but dwelling on them repetitively enhances them. Yeah. Negative feelings can almost be vomited out. You rid yourself of them in some way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I've got to stop reading you. It's all so interesting. I've got to stop reading you. Otherwise, uh, you know, if you're not seeing the same comments, it's not it's not helpful for you. Okay, let's, shall we? It's the 300th um, episode of Tea with the Druid. And Tea with the Druid started in this deliciously random way where, where I remember going into the office of the order and saying good morning to Dave and him saying, have you heard of this? live streaming thing and I because I'm an old fogey I said no I don't know so you should try it out I've just done something on Facebook and hundreds of people watched and it was really fun and it was live and so I did a, a tea with the druid just as a just as a try just as a one-off and it felt so good to be together with a whole bunch of people uh it's gone on ever since so 300 divided by 52 is what um two four 
it's about six years, five and a half years or something like that. So it's been going on for that um, amount of um, time. And over the years, um, there's been this wonderful sense of community. And I stopped for a while around, I can't remember, about two years ago. Um, I, I stopped for a while. I've two reasons. One is, you know, my mum had died and I was feeling quite stressed and I needed a break. So I had a break and I also thought, well, maybe, you know, we've done 180 or whatever it was at that time. Maybe that's enough. Maybe I'm kind of overdoing this. And, you know, uh, but in a lovely synchronicity, I met somebody quite by random in Ireland who uh, just told me how helpful he had found it. And he had a particular symptom, actually. He had very, very debilitating headaches. And he said, I don't know why, but when I do tea with a druid, the headaches go away. And and I'd love it if you carried on. And I thought, well, that's really nice. That's interesting. Um, so, 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 so I started again. And I'm so glad I started them up again. So let's 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 go into a in, let's go into a meditation a celebration meditation let's do that let's let's because an important part of tea with a druid is the meditation and it's very roughly 50 50. i'd always tried to aim for 10 minutes chat and checking in with everybody and 10 minutes meditation it's stretched a bit now i know but let's go into a meditation and let's do it in the most relaxed way uh as if We'd all been sitting around in in a you know dinner party or around around the fire, you know, chatting to each other, uh, being convivial, sharing how we were feeling and stories and checking in with each other. And then and then I just suggest, hey, should we do a meditation? I see. So yes, but you know, keep your drinks with you and your snacks. You know, just let's just enjoy this. And let's just, we're already in the sacred grove and our awareness of being seated in front of our screens, we can allow it to fade as much as we wish. We can close our eyes if we want to or soften our gaze and just to better focus on the meditation and just start to allow our awareness of the walls around us, the ceiling above us, the floor beneath us to fade away. And here we are sitting out under the stars, fire burning. We've had a little party. We've, um, we've been celebrating these 300 um, episodes. We've come together and we've come together from east and west, south and north to be here together now in this circle. And let's start off, since we're in that party frame of mind, let's start off with something that often we've done at the end of a meditation, but let's, let's start it at the beginning as well, right while we're here. Let's just, just imagine that if, if it feels comfortable for you, that your hands are drifting up and you're taking the hands of the person to either side of you. So suddenly you're holding the hands. There are about 274 people in this circle it's a lovely big crowd of people and we're sitting here we're holding hands there's a fire crackling and you can smell the wood smoke and there's a phrase that we say in druid rituals that um which is that we swear by peace and love to stand when we might be sitting heart to heart and hand in hand marco spirit and hear us now confirming this, our sacred vow. And may our circle be blessed, may the earth be blessed, may the trees around us be blessed. And then let's just gently squeeze the hand that you're holding on each side and just let your hands drift down and just rest on the earth. Or well, there might be a really handy stone that you can rest your hands on so you don't have to drop your hands right down. It could even be a little mossy log or the earth. You just rest your hands on the earth. May this earth be blessed. We feel the earth and you feel all the life in the earth all the creatures, all the moisture. 
And you feel the energy flowing into your body, flowing into your energy field. And you notice the way the earth gives to you and that you can just surrender to the energy of the earth that flows into your being. And at the same time, as you breathe out, you can let all the stresses and strains just drift down, allowing the earth just to hold you and support you. Breathing in and breathing out. Just letting go to being here now. And having a sense of being now surrounded by the trees, the presence of the tree spirits around us, this container, this community of beings, our destinies totally entwined, the life of the trees, the life of humanity completely entwined our destinies are. And they act as our companions, our guides, our friends, our healers. Breathe in the scented air of the forest. Nothing that needs to be done, just breathing in and breathing out. And then become aware of the night sky above, the moon, the stars shining and feel the blessing of the moonlight and the starlight. Subtle energies that enter into our being. Studies of certain sea creatures have found that the rising of the Pleiades triggers their breeding cycle. Think of the influence of the Pleiades, so many thousands, millions of years, light years away, influencing an animal, a creature in that way. We're being influenced in subtle ways by the stars. And as we breathe in, we can feel the energy of the stars and of the sky above us flowing into us. And this vitality and energy meets the energy of the earth within the center of our being. And within the center of our being, we are both able to surrender, to be passive, to open, to be open, to receive. Nothing to be done, nothing to be striven for. Just opening to the blessings of the sky, of the stars of the trees, of the life of the forest, and to the blessings 
of the earth and the life of the earth. And at the center of our consciousness, just open, receptive, blessed. filled with gratitude for all these blessings. And then the great wonder that we can move from being open and receptive of being blessed, to blessing, to giving, to being active, active in the world, active in life, that from this still center, we can will and decide and choose and direct, make choices and we can think and imagine and create. What a gift and what a power for us to have, to be able to be active in this world. And just allowing that awareness of being able to be open and receptive and active and choosing in the world. Let's just allow those thoughts to settle and enter into an Eisteddfod period of our celebration. And I'll just read a poem that comes from Mary Oliver, wild geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair yours and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. The world invites us to act and to be in the world, to do and to be, to be open and passive, to be nourished and fed, and to give in the world, to act in the world.
May the earth be blessed. May our lives be blessed. May all life be blessed. Your hands drift out to either side of you. you. Hold the hands of the person to either side of you. And you feel the power of our circle. The connection, the community. And we ask that this circle of peace, that the energy of our circle may the peace and harmony here radiate out. May the earth be blessed. And if we allow our hands now, so we squeeze the hands, drop the hands down, touch the earth. May the earth be blessed. And then imagine your heart or move your hands up to your heart or imagine that your hands are at your heart. May my life be blessed. And feel that blessing flowing into you. And may all lives be blessed. May all life on earth be blessed. Taking in a big deep breath, hold. Breathe out fully and deeply. One more time. Breathe in, hold for a moment, and then breathe out fully and deeply. And as you do that, your awareness of the sacred grove and of the circle begins to fade, and you retain all the positive feelings you've had in this meditation. You retain them but you allow your awareness of the grove to fade as you become aware of being seated in front of your screen, fully present here and now. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes. Yes, Margie, the time changes, Central European time changes an hour ahead as well. So you, you that's why the time is as it is. Um, David Jones, such a beautiful poem, one of my favourites. Um, where have you gone? You've disappeared. Um, always touches my heart and gives me hope and encouragement. Tea with the Druid is one of my favourite meetings for sure. Happy 300th and here's to many more. Thank you, David. Uh, yes. <sighs> so, so good to be with you. Um, thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for turning up. Thank you for being present. There's a, there's a magic by us. There's, it's great to, to watch the recording. So if you're watching this as a recording, it's, it's obviously you know, equally important. But there's something special about... Um, I think meeting together in 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 live, as it were. So so um, so that's that's lovely, um, and if we can affirm all those positive feelings that we experience when we're together with each other, like now, for instance, and um, it's like that's what we need. We need to affirm these feelings because they can they can drift away. The, the world's a very tricky place, and it's easy for those feelings. And so we that's why we have to that's why we have to you know, meet every week, if you like. You know, it's not that like we don't get it, so we have to keep coming back. It's not that at all. It's like no, you sort of bathe in this every week. Oh, and I wanted to say the Mary Oliver poem. I had planned to read it. You, some of you may have noticed, I started the meditation. Um, last uh, week by saying I'm going to read a poem in the middle of the meditation and then I was leading the meditation I completely forgot that I said I was going to read the poem and I didn't read the poem that was the poem I was going to read that beautiful poem that those of you who are doing doing the Order of Bards of It's Druid's course know it's like the first poem in the course uh, because it just says it all you know what I love about it is that final detail at the end where she says over and over announcing your place in the family of things and you might think, well, that's kind of strange. Why does she say things? Why doesn't she say beings or something? But but that's the whole point. It's like the rocks and the stones and the trees and the flowers and the animals, like everything, you know, announcing your place in everything. 
So it's a beautiful sort of detail there. So many, many blessings, much love. And next Monday, I'm going to be on a boat, making my way back to England. And so um, we're going to have a recording. And it's I recorded a really interesting interview um, with uh, Dr. Steve Taylor, who's a really interesting psychologist whose latest book, The Adventure, has come out. And he's writing a book on, just finishing up a book on creativity, where he's studied the life of the Beatles and is looking at all the sort of psychological understanding of creativity and using their story as a way of putting it, holding it together and so on. And, and so we, we have a really interesting discussion. So that will be broadcast next uh, Monday. And, um, and actually, I think the following Monday, I'm going to be away as well. So I'm having another pre-recorded one, which with somebody really interesting. So um, do, do come along and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, lots of love. Bye.